Hello, you're watching Love New X, and today let's talk about the recently finished airing Chinese period drama, Shao Nian Ge Xing, Blood of Youth. This is a 40 episodes web drama that has recently finished airing on the platform Youku. It is produced by the platform Youku plus three different production companies, among which there is a company called Zhongying Nianian, which also produced the animation version of this story back in 2018. The drama version is directed by Yin Tao, who has also directed these dramas. There was a novel called Shao Nian Ge Xing. It got adapted into an animation series. The company that produced the animation series also did this drama version where they did get the original author back to write the script. And this drama version is led by Li Hongyi, Ao Ruipeng, Lin Boyang, Liu Xueyi, Li Xinze, Dai Yanyi. It took about four months for this drama to finish shooting from October 2021 to January 2022. If you have watched the animation before, well, this drama is pretty close to the animation and to the original story as well. If you're not familiar, it is about a group of young people, late teens, early 20s, very young, going into Jianghu in this wuxia slash xianxia world, creating their generations of the Jianghu story. So it will involve a bit of the older generation, their father, their teacher's generation story. It will mix a little bit of the Jianghu and the court, the politics, the fictional world settings, empress as one of our male lead is a prince. And then in terms of the Jianghu world, the wuxia world that the drama describes, it is sitting in between realistic wuxia and complete fantasy of xianxia. So people have crazy skills that definitely defines basic physics, but then they're not gods, so they can't really be immortal. I'll give it a 1.5 gold mine rating. For this drama, some parts they did really well and I highly appreciate and I can totally see the dedication that many of the people on this crew have put into the production. So even though it's not a high rating drama here for Avenue X, I would say I actually have a very good feeling about it. Now, let me do the usual thing of breaking it down to two parts, first talking about the positive things and then the problems. On the positive end, number one, although it is 40 episodes long, overall it's actually not a super watered down or draggy drama. And it does have a lot of things and a lot of characters going on to fill up the minutes. When I was watching it, that's the thing that I worried most, is this is gonna start to get really boring, they're gonna fill like five episodes with nothing happening and I'm gonna have to four times speed through it. Well, during watching of this thing, although occasionally I still speed it up a bit, overall it's actually not bad for a pair drama adapted from a novel. The second positive thing I will say about this drama is they put money on the actual storytelling, not paying super popular actors with ridiculous fees and crushing on the part of a production where you should be spending money. As I am not familiar with the original IP, I've never watched the animation story, I come into the story completely unaware of any of those characters' names, background stories, where the whole thing is going, zero knowledge. I have to say, initially, it was pretty shocking in terms of how they present the fighting sequences, crazy CGI. If you watch a lot of, say, Japanese animation many, many years ago and then leading up to now, if you're very familiar with the whole anime world, it's so familiar. That whole manga animation feeling of somebody, I have a name for my particular fighting skills and when I do it, there's a set of music that will happen, there's a designed color scheme. When you have a live action and real people doing it, it can take a bit of time for you to get used to it. It's actually within its own genre, a really well done type of wuxia xianxia slash thing. And I think for the audiences, right, you have to give it the freedom and give it the license of creation to say, okay, so I'll go into your world, I'll accept people can fight like that in your world. Once you're okay with that setting, this drama is pretty meaty. At the beginning, it was hard for me. Gradually, I got used to it. Although I still feel like with a human sword, and just like swing it and you can cut 18 level pagoda down in the middle into three parts is definitely over the top. I think they probably put most of the production budget into set design, into post-production, <laughs> into CG. It's definitely something that worth this in the current environment. Then the third positive point is something I've already mentioned at the very beginning of this review, which is I can totally tell the people who are making this drama, the crew, the actors, everybody who's on camera, I'm 
off camera. They put a lot of work, heart, dedication, passion into this project. You really can sense it. Even though I'd say there's so <laughs> much space for improvement. Younger generation of roles, the main roles are two male lead, played by Li Hongyi and Ao Ruipeng, and then the two girls who show up most, played by Lin Boyan and Dan Yan Yi, and then you have a lesser important but more experienced actors playing the role of Wu Xing and Da Shi Xiong, Liu Xue Yi and Li Xinze. Their acting level is, let's say, pass. Adding on top, the older generation of actors who are so much more experienced, they show up and uh, it saves the day. <laughs> For example, He Zhonghua, such an experienced actor in Wu Xia world, he just needs to stand there and he's right such as Ding Yongdai, this great actor who's actually played a lot of serious dramas, serious roles, almost reprised his role in Nirvana in Fire, the Emperor, with those older actors sitting there. It just keeps the quality, pulls the acting quality, holding it and not letting it crash. So I still say it's on the positive end because I can tell they really want to do a good job and tell a good story. And none of those younger actors are the super popular, highly expensive people. Without those sort of halos and special treatments, the fandom tends to give the top traffic actors in China. They really just don't have that much space also to just play the boss, showing off and not caring about what the world thinks. They really have to say, we still have to do a standard good enough job to not get hated and destroy our career in the future. You can feel that there's a lot of energy a lot of care, kind of did try their best type of thing going on. These are the positive things and these are definitely the reasons that kept me through 40 episodes of this drama. Now let's move on to the negative part and why this drama is only a 1.5. First, a very basic thing, this is a heavily dubbed drama apart from a couple of um, older actors and they're all dubbed by people who are way too familiar to my ears. This drama particularly bad. In the first episode, when we see the two male leads showing up, for Ao Rui Peng, his voice, dubber's voice, is not that familiar to me. So for me, it was okay. But the moment, oh my god, the moment Li Hongyi's role opened his mouth, I'm like, Gu Jiang Shan. So in my brain, I see Zhou Zishu from Shanghe Lin. As long as his role is talking and I'm not looking at the screen. For example, I turn away to pick something. In my head, I see Zhou Zishu. And then when I look at the screen, Zhou Zishu's face can fade away. But then, because Li Hongyi, it's my opinion, okay, to my brain, he looks very similar to the actor Cheng Yi at certain angle. Extreme similarity. Not all the angles, but certain angle. So when I look at the person, it looks like a different actor. When I look away, my brain gives me a different actor. And he's the male lead. He has the most screen time. Imagine my pain. Not to mention Chao Shi Yu <laughs> is the female lead who, um, Dubs 90% of Didi Reba's dramas and uh, yeah, I see her face too. Then Wei Chao dubs Tang Lian who is also just a voice that even if he only just sigh, I can hear it's Wei Chao's sign, not any human's sign of the world. Then Liu Xue Yi, <laughs> dubbed by Ai Jie. Literally 90% of Ren Jia Lun's dramas are dubbed by this guy. I will never be able to not let it bother me. My brain is set. This wiring is, is here, right? I have to reincarnate and have a different physical body to not have this problem. Second thing, I kind of already said in the positive part, girls and guys acting. Let's just say it leaves a lot <laughs> to be desired, particularly for the leading actor, Li Hongyi, who plays Xiao Se. He really is <laughs> having pretty much only a couple of facial expressions. He held it through out the 40 episodes. It just manages to not crash. And I think for the particular character he plays, because the personality that this person has, therefore that type of acting can still not really fall completely short of making sense for his role. But if it's anything more challenging, his acting is not gonna be able to hold it. In comparison, I'd say Liu Xue Yi and Li Xinzi made it much easier for me to follow their role and getting, you know, who they are as characters. Problem comes with that is Liu Xue Yi honestly, honestly is just too old for his role. Even though he's the better actor among the younger actors, there's only that much you can compensate with your performance when your character's age is genuinely too far away from your real age and you're the type of person who happens to just not look very young. He's in his 30s. He plays this role who is barely like 16, 17 years old. I had to pretty much convince myself for the first 15 episodes or so, 12 episodes or so. He's 17, he's 17, he's 17, he's 17. So for a 17 character to say that and to act like that to the other characters, it makes sense. Ignore the fact that Liu Xue Yi's face looks 
looks like he's a 30 year old guy. So in an ideal world, if we can keep Liu Xueyi's good looking face and his acting and, and then still have him aging in the right range, that would be ideal for Wu Xing. And then the last thing, I think the biggest problem while I was watching the drama is I do have to do a lot of self convincing, particularly when it concerns the court part, the imperial part, the emperor, the princes, and how the court is structured, who has the power, the five eunuch that has so much power. I have to do this, right? Because it's so, again, child's play. It probably is like less of a child's play than say Fu Tu Yuan's level of court politics, which is <laughs> like, what am I watching? This one is slightly better, but barely, barely. Okay, so again, I have to really do a lot of convincing on my part to believe. First is the whole royal family, imperial family is Xiao family named. Yeah, does that remind you of something? Then there's like the Lang Ya Wang name, which although, you know, Lang Ya Wang is a, for different things, it just constantly reminds you of that. Then all the things about there was a rebellion of a good prince. In Nirvana, it's the son of the emperor. In this drama, it's the brother of the emperor who dies and his whole family dies. And the prince who wants to stand up for this uncle in Blood of Youth uh, gets kind of expelled. That's like pretty much Xiao Jingyan. <laughs> of Nirvana fire. Yeah, so you see a lot of similarities, so you can't help remembering what happened in the other drama, not to mention the emperor is the same actor, right? But then all the politics, it really feels like you're just looking at primary school kids, like playing house and pretending, you know, I'm emperor, I'm, this, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna usurp your throne. And then by the point, like the, the whole army comes to the palace about to take the throne. Within a couple of lines and a couple of like exchange of conversations, it's all dealt with, done. The rebellion people just like left. <laughs> And then everything went back to normal. And all the bad prince, the bad people got rid of, you know, easily. Melly gets what he wants. And even like he can get the throne, oh, I don't like it, I'll just give it to my brother. And the brother is like, I'm not gonna chase you after you and try to murder you because I believe you're a good person. I'm a good person too. And then we're gonna change our parents' generation's problem. <laughs> yeah, they probably live in the world where having a throne actually is not so so big a thing. I have to convince myself basically it's not any more unbelievable than the fact that you can cut an architecture down with one sword. Given that what type of IP this is, I guess nobody actually hoped this drama to do well or be appreciated in any way. But as it airs and start to get traction, people realize, oh, it's actually much better than we thought. At the end of the day, I think it is the very genuine, candid passion of the people making this drama that really got leaked through so that we forgive some of the things that it didn't do very well. And within today's drama land operation standard, you only have that much resources. You only have that type of environment of doing dramas of such. It's unreasonable to expect such dramas to suddenly break the ceiling. Thinking about this particular genre of drama, the Wuxia Xianxia ish drama based on an IP, what Blood of Use has managed to do is already good enough. So that should conclude my review on the drama Blood of Youth. It's probably in Tao's better work. If you credit a drama mostly to the director, it's better than that one, that one, at least, okay? We can argue if it's better than that one, but then for these two, oh, 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 <laughs> this one, this one is the good student in the class. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.